Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilos and I will be your guide on uh, this journey into the wondrous world of farming Pakus. There are many guides on YouTube about Pakus and uh, every single one I've looked at for inspiration back when I wanted to make my own. They were always so complicated with in terms of automation and uh, I just feel that automation is a bit fragile. It's maybe a bit fun but it's not really uh, very good. So I wanted to make one that is very, very light on automation. Take a look at it. That's it. It's a credit sensor, nothing else. So with that, uh, I think this is a better, simpler build than uh, many other I've seen. And therefore, this is the one I'm going to show you. So um, of course, I've been inspired by various people around, uh, around the infosphere on how to do this. But this one is sort of uh, my amalgamation of it. I'll be explaining it in three different parts because there are three different rooms here. One is the breeding room, one is the kill room, and one is the feeding room. So they each serve a different purpose and there are some quirks and stuff to take care of at each location, both when building and when uh, and when maintaining it, that uh, should be taken into consideration. Okay, so let's start with the breeding room. The purpose of this breeding room, no. So before we dive into each of the different rooms, let's talk a bit about the Pakus themselves, because uh, why are we want to make Pakus? Well, Pakus uh, have a few characteristics. They breed extremely quickly. If we look at them here, they will be change per cycle is 67%. So as long as you keep them happy, then they are actually laying an egg every one and a half cycle. That is absolutely amazing. So you get tons and tons of those. On top of that, you also have the opportunity to... Um, uh, they also, since they lay a lot of eggs, you also get lime, and lime is brilliant because that is uh, your source of of limestone for steel. So eggs to lime to steel. So that is uh, also something we need a lot of. Plus, of course, the paku fillets can be made into seafood. They can be combined with the barbecue from our hatch farming and then give us some pretty awesome uh, surf and turf for our dupes. So that is why we want to get some pakus up and running. And uh, so let's... Take a look at it. So these are here. They take eight squares each. This one is, uh, this room is, well, actually the easiest way to look at the room is it is 34 tiles. 32 tiles is enough for four of these. So uh, I have slightly more. So, and the reason why I have exactly this size is because this is the size that one auto sweeper can reach. Nine in width and then four in height. So that is the essence of it. Let's take a look at uh, the actual breeding area because that's the main part of uh, of where they they keep going. So I keep this uh, for breeding, and since when they are happy and uh, well fed, then they will be uh, laying an egg every one and a half cycles. So that will generate a ton of eggs and a ton of, of things here. So that is super nice. You can see we have a little one there. Uh, the way this one works is the intention is if I want to maintain four pakus in here. If one of them dies, then when the next when the next egg is then is then laid, then I don't want to take it out. So basically, if they lay an egg now, then I want to take that egg and throw it up here in the kiln room. If they if they, one of them dies, we want to make sure that we take them, take all the uh, stuff out. And once we have done that, then uh, um, yeah, one of them dies, and then the next egg will not be taken out. So this is why I have this location. This is for the extra egg that is uh, ready to be renewing one of these locations. And uh, the way it works down here is this auto sweeper can take everything in here and it has two different locations. One is exclusively taking fry eggs. The fry eggs will either go to the kill room or they'll go into here. Uh, when necessary, we'll look at the automation afterwards, but it's more important to get this sense of it. The other one will take pretty much everything else and take the eggs that we don't want, the tropical and the gulps. Then it will take uh, the paco fillets and it will also take the eggshells and the polluted dirt as well. So that means everything that they can spawn from this will be picked up automatically and they can sell. see that. This will also go in if we go over to the overlay here. There is a line behind here that goes up and in here. So basically you can see the polluted dirt will be placed in here and then it will be going further out. Basically it just takes the paco fillet and all of the stuff will be going out here. And this is my central storage. So it goes into central storage and then be distributed from there. The other part is this one, which is top one is only taking the fry eggs. This one will be going into here, this location, and then it'll lo look at a shut off. If the shut off is open, then it will go through and go up to the kill room. 
If it is shut off is closed, then it will pass on and put up here. So the condition for opening and closing is the only automation we have. Counting the number of critters, counting the number of eggs. If it is more than four, then op allow this one to be open. Right now it's not more than four, but as soon as an egg is laid, then this one will jump up to five, four critters plus one egg, and then it will open. It'll send a green signal. It'll pass this through, and then the egg will go through. Let's wait until one of these will lay an egg, and then we can uh, take a look at how it looks uh, in, in action. We are following this one. It is at 96%, so almost ready to lay an egg. And once it lays an egg, we are going to pause the game. 97, we'll just slow it down a bit here. 99, and let's see what egg we get as it lays an egg. And that should be coming out. There, that's the egg coming in. Immediately we look at this. This has detected four eggs plus one uh, floor critters and one egg. It opens opens the wire here. It gets put in to here and goes through and goes up to the kill room. That is excellent. Now the only way to uh, to see when when something happens is that one of these will uh, will actually one of them was elderly, so we can actually just wait for this one to uh, to drop off by itself. It's going to take a few cycles, but uh, I can just fast forward to that. So uh, we will wait for one of these to die off, and then we'll see what happens uh, when another egg spawns after that. One of them have died off from old age, and we now can see that only three. If we look at uh, this one, where are you? Oh, this one is 96. There, 96. We're going to follow this one. So what happens when this one is spawning? Uh, not spawning, uh, laying an egg, then we want to see what happens with our automation, whether it works as we have uh, anticipated, and that's, there's the egg. All right, right now, this is detecting four out of four. That means this is shut off, and it goes in, and it bypasses, and it gets placed up here. So now we have a fry egg incubating, plus we have three in this location. That means it's green, and when they, the next one lays an egg, that egg will be pushed out. But this egg will be just staying up here. The reason why we don't have very much water up here is because we don't want the, the Pakus to accidentally swim up here and lay an egg at that location just randomly. It could happen. So we want to make sure that we don't have too much water up here, just enough so that they can flop down, but not enough so that they can, uh, they can swim up there themselves. So that is basically all we have in this location uh, for all of the... Uh, all the configuration for this location. We are, of course, feeding it, and that will come back when we get to the feeder location. Let's have a look at the kill room. The kill room is actually not a room, and that's super important. If it is a room, then they will get a third debuff. Right now, they are glum, and they are overcrowded. That is not a problem. When they are glum and overcrowded, they will have 7% uh, chance, or 7% increase to laying an egg every turn. And uh, that means they will, since they have lived for 25 cycles, 20 of them are adult cycles. That means they will be 20 times 7%. So that's 1.4 eggs per life cycle. That means over time, they should actually be laying more eggs and they should be reproducing just in here by themselves. Crazy, right? But um, it seems to be working. So, but the one thing is the super important. And if I go into my sandbox mode and then try and do this one, as soon as I do this, they will get another buff, debuff. They should get another debuff, damn it. Here they now have the cramped one, and that means the reproduction rate is minus 100. So it's super important that you do not have uh, this blocked off in a room. You must have it open, but it's also important that you prevent dupes from going in here. This is why I have a door that's locked, so that we can get in if need be, but we don't want to go in. The reason why is because when they uh, die or when there's something coming in, the polluted dirt, that kind of thing, then... We don't want the dupes to schedule to go in here and go back again. This is completely dupe-free, and uh, they will get it if there is a path to it, and sometimes they will take it before the auto sweeper can get it. Therefore, we leave this locked off, and then the kill room, they will just be here. They'll grow old, they'll die, they'll turn into Pakofilets. Pakofilets goes back and becomes juicy, nice uh, uh, cooked seafood. So that is all there is to it with this uh, this room. You just need some water in here. And I make it one tile. There's no reason to make it more than one tile. I make it one tile so that they don't spend a lot of time pathing back and forth when you have a lot of them in here. Uh, what we can do is we can build a little automation thing in here just to get a sense of how many we have. We have 56, 11 eggs, and 46 uh, pakus. So that is uh, that's good. 
Let's take a look at the feeding room because there's also a few things. When it comes to feeding, as you want to tame the first of your uh, of your pacos, then they will be they'll need to be fed in order to be tamed and the best way to feed them is with algae. You're going to be using a lot of algae because they consume 140 kilos of algae per cycle. That's absolutely insane. That means you don't really want to do that. I uh, I am not interested in making one of those uh starvation ones where they are only fed a tiny amount because you need to manage it with multiple here and i just don't feel like it because we spent the the algae to get them tame once they're tame you will never need to do that again because any uh, offspring will also be tame oh that's a pack of filet more got back so now we're actually down to two we're actually down to one that's crazy yeah that's a little one there um you can you can uh, recover you can recover it's somehow all alone it procreates <laughs> this is it's because I started with three of them at exactly the same age, so they also died at the same time. But it's not a problem. There's no need to take one of these in here. This one will be uh, done incubating, and then it'll be coming back out here. You'll also lay another egg that will come up in this location as well. Anyway, back to the feeding room. So the feeding room is uh, is now feeding it fungal spore. If we look at our pacos, they will be consuming either 140 kilos per cycle, uh, or they will be feeding... Or feeding on seeds and if you've been doing all sorts of other things you will have a monstrous amount of seeds let's look at the seed uh, no that's not uh, here we'll go to that one and then look at our seed so if we look at seeds for example the fungal spores well don't really have oh this here yeah, fungal spores 270 plus whatever we have in here uh, grub fruits also have a lot of those and also mealwood seeds so basically it, since they consume one third of those per cycle, then that means since I have four, <clears throat> most of the time I have four, then uh, they will consume one point one and a third every cycle. And that means if I have 600, I don't know, they can hundreds and hundreds of, of cycles uh, will, will they keep alive. So this is not going to be a problem. You will be running out of, uh, of frames or patients uh, or oxygen or whatever before you run out of seeds for your uh, your pacos. So basically, it's not a problem to feed them as long as you feed them fungal spores. That should be uh, should be uh, as long as you feed them some kind of seeds, then they should be fine. Uh, so the feeding here, so that comes in automatic, and this one serves uh, is a very specific location. It can pick up here because otherwise you will get the uh, eggshells that accumulate here. So you want to make sure that you can grab those through the open through the pneumatic door. You can also grab through this pneumatic door. You can grab the stuff here, and we can do this. So this one is serving the purpose of grabbing stuff from here, grabbing stuff from here but also transferring from the receptacle and into the fish feeder. So those are several different locations or things that this one is doing. And when you take those three things together, those three rooms, then we have a, a completed build of a, of a Paco farm. Uh, we'll remove this one again. This is just, and this one will uh, replenish itself, even though it might go into some uh, phases like this one where it isn't really recovering or isn't really doing very well. But um, it'll uh, it'll recover itself uh, pretty uh, quickly, I think. Let's just have a look at. So this is reproduction 96 and or 94. So when it reproduces, we're just gonna have a look. Then we should be able to see that it goes up here and then becomes another one, right? Which of course takes five cycles for it to uh, to be to hatch. Then another five cycles for it to grow up, and then from there on it'll be producing an egg every one and a half cycle. So it is, it's not going to be a problem. It'll take, this is a, this is very much the long game. There we go. That's another egg. Now we have two eggs over here. Um, and this one will put another egg out in one and a half cycle. So that's, uh, which will also get in here. So we, it's really about sort of desynchronizing these three, which they will by themselves. Anyway, uh, that is uh, all I have for you today. I hope this was useful. I think this is a really simple build. Uh, it does take a bit of uh, figuring out how to best place things uh, in order to sort of make sure that this one can reach everything and uh, this one cannot reach that and how to just do the various things. But it does work and it works really well uh, over time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you do, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know other things in Oxygen not included you'd like to uh, have me do guides for because uh, sometimes there are some obvious things that I don't really think of. But uh, this is a cool design, so wanted to share that with you. Until next time, take care and as always, stay effective.